Hey, 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 welcome back to another edition of the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. I got it right, Jay. <laughs> We're the second time, the third time. Uh, <laughs> I am Cynthia Conte, one of your hosts. And I am Giandra LaBeouf, and I'm still wearing green for the money and gold for the honeys. There you go. There you go. Jay, 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 we've had some great guests. This wow. just, and this is just today. And then we're going to have another one coming up. Uh, we can't say just yet. Another one. It's another one. It's called The Chosen One, if y'all know who he is. But we ain't going to say just yet. But uh, wow. Wow. I didn't expect some of the, the interviews that we've had, some of the, the stories that they told us. Yeah, it's been a lot of great insight. Just that's what I really love about what we are doing here. Just seeing the insight, the people, because when you know people and know they're come from and their story, it gets harder to say a lot of the dumb shit you see on Twitter that people say about fighters and mm -hmm. their backgrounds. People have never fought in their lives, never had any real adversity. So it's just been so refreshing to have these conversations with you, with them. And I love what we're doing. Yeah. Before we get into our guests, we, uh, let's talk about a real quick fight that's going to be happening tonight. Uh, by by the time you see this episode, you're going. To, we're, the, the the results will already be out, but it's tonight on ESPN Plus uh, in Japan. It's on Inoue versus uh, Donaire Two. I ran a poll on my Instagram who they got, and I got 71% Donaire. Wow, I too yeah. am part of the 71%. It's going to be a great fight, and we all going to be up at five o'clock in the morning, looking tired. Four, honey, four. Oh, four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. Pacific time, and it's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. We'll, we'll have, I'll have my eye mask on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't be doing no Instagram live or Hell no nothing. No. If not, it's going to be filters on filters I'm gonna on filters. I'm going to have my bonnet on. I'm going to be looking <laughs> like every black auntie you can imagine. <laughs> I will have my bonnet on in the whole nine. Do you think that's going to end in a knockout? I don't think it's going to end in a knockout. I think it's going to go the distance again, but I'm going to side with uh, Donaire. Woo! You know, got to go with my peoples. My buhai. My buhai. I'm really scared, though. Like, the monster is one of my very, very favorite fighters. I've been... I've been high on him since he made his debut here years ago, and I remember interviewing him. He didn't know anything what I was saying because he didn't speak English and so I just I watch my interview with uh, for Ring when I watch it back and I'm just so overexcited he's like yes <laughs> yes the extent of my <laughs> Japanese is uh I think that means thank you very much drop in the comments if I said it right <laughs> God knows I'm pretty much sure that's you're it. like my cat is hairy or such <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, enough of that. Uh, so hopefully maybe our predictions are right. If not, well, then best of luck b uh, to both Inoue and Donaire. Like I always say, just make sure you guys are safe and healthy in the ring and out after the fight. All right. So we got this gentleman. He's made a lot of noise. There's a lot of controversies. There's a lot of talk about him because we want to know he's the chosen one. But is he the real thing? Edgar Berlanga Jr., tell us. Tell us and welcome. Welcome to our show. Okay. Are you, you're the chosen one, but are you really the chosen one in boxing? Of course, you know, like at the end of the day, you know, people's going to talk, you know, um, especially in, in the boxing world. Um, you know, when I was knocking everybody out in the first round, they were saying uh, that I was fighting bums. And when I went the distance, they said I was a bum now. So, you know, at the end of the day in boxing, this boxing game, you can't, uh, you can't, um, you can't, uh, how can I say it? Please, uh, everyone. Please, everyone. You can't, you can't satisfy everybody. You know, the only people I can satisfy is my family, you know, my girl, my son, and, us, and, and my family. Go ahead. It's crazy how, how fans can turn so quickly, particularly with social media. After your last fight, do you are you how dialed in are you even to social media? Well, how did you react to seeing the comments? Because it was a fight that you clearly won. It didn't end as devastating as some of your previous fight, but it was a fight you did indeed win. Yeah. Um. So in the beginning, it was I was I was annoyed, but then after a week or two, I was like already over it. You know, for me, it was just like I, I look at Floyd. I look at the greatest fighters. You know, the greatest athletes, the greatest people out there in the world, and you know, they get hated the most. And uh, like I always say, and what Floyd says and all the, you know, top athletes say, you know, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping, you know. So as long as I got people talking about me, that's the most important thing. Exactly. That is true. You know, I I, I have to admit that, you know, when uh, Top Rank always put you out, we all knew you as a, as a knockout artist because you were knocking them out first and second round. Um, I remember the knockout uh, on the Lomachenko card. I mean, it was... 
It was incredible. And then you got into your fights. You had to face adversity. You got dropped for the first time. Um, And then you came back and you were winning your fights with unanimous decisions. And that was a time, okay, now you're going to dig deep because these are the times that you're going to learn something because we're seeing you get your rounds in because that's what we wanted to see. Can can your chin be tested? Can you go the 10 rounds? Are you able to go 12 rounds? Uh, What those past fights? I hate that word of like, what have you learned about yourself? But really, Edgar, what have you learned about yourself in those fights that you've gone the distance? Um, just the experience, you know, I'm just happy that I gained the experience I did, you know, uh, me tearing my bicep, uh, in, in the October fight, fighting, uh, seven rounds after that, winning the fight, um, you know, won by unanimous decision, got dropped, came back up, still won the next round, you know, clearly, um, you know, it just comes with the territory, like, I feel like me being a young athlete, me being young, um, you know, obviously, like, me catching all those knockouts, I caught a lot of attention on social media, you know, on the world out there, man. And But um, for me, it's just, you know, it's, it's a process. You know, it's growing stages. You know, you got to continue to grow as a fighter and continue to uh, get the experience that you need because at the end of the day, being... I, I can't face the best if I haven't gone 10 rounds or 12 rounds in, in, in a professional fight. You know, I can't sit here and say, yo, listen, I'm ready to fight X, Y, and Z, and I haven't gone past the sixth, seventh round, you know? So now that I've gotten those rounds and I've gotten the experience, you know, I feel like, you know, um, after this weekend, me, me winning, um, you know, we look in the face, you know, big, bigger names. Heavy as a head that wears the crown. And uh, we've had an opportunity to see you on TV. You're carrying the lineage of, of Puerto Rico, of a fantastic uh, history in boxing. Where do you want your ultimate legacy to be in the sport and in Puerto Rican, bio, just in boxing in general? Yeah. Um, you know, like, I've been I've been doing this for a very long time, you know, since I was seven years old. And um the goal is you obviously to become champ and uh to become the undisputed world champ, you know, like my brothers, man, Shakur Stevenson, um is you know, he's doing it. Devin Haney's doing it, um, you know, Tiafimo did it. So these are guys that was in my generation that I grew up with, and me seeing them, you know, they they lit a fire in me, definitely. You know, me seeing the previous fights that I'm now. Um, it's like, it's really lit a fire in me and I just want to become champ. You know, I really want to become champ. I want to have the title. Um, and eventually, you know, I want to, to fill those shoes that, that Trinidad did, that Cotto did, you know, fighting on the Puerto Rican Day weekend. And this weekend is the stepping stone to that. You know, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy task. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm going to be better than them or I'm going to accomplish more than them, you know, but I just want to be and go down as as one of the greatest Puerto Rican fighters of all time. Someone said earlier that it's almost like a lose-lose situation for you because if you knock him out, then or if you go to war with Alexis, then you went to war with Alexis. But if you knock him out, then it was just like, was it a real true test for him? How do you see this fight? How do you see him as your opponent? Yeah, like, you know, on, on, you, know you go on social, you see everybody, I posted him up, everybody's like, He's, oh, another Uber driver, another cab driver, you know, he's, and I just laugh. So I'm like, yo, if, if, if I, if I do knock him out, if I, if I do beat him up, they're going to say I fought a bum, you know, and then he obviously. He has a good if, record. I mean, he's a knockout if, artist also. He only has two yeah. losses on his record. If I go to distance with him, I know they're going to say, oh, he's no good. He's, 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 he's all hype. So like I said before in the beginning, um, I just want to, perform i just want to look great um use my skill and just shut the haters up you know shut the crowd up i just want to perform and look good you know it's puerto rican day weekend i'm main event in my city my hometown madison square garden so all i'm looking for is for fireworks man i'm looking to set a, a, a real good performance this energy is going to be crazy at the garden like you said Puerto Rican uh, weekend and he is dominican tons of dominicans in new york tons of puerto ricans in new york what is the vibe going to be at the garden? Oh, it's going to be it's going to be crazy, man. Uh, I'm so happy. You don't understand. Like this week, I, you know, today me waking up, I was excited. You know, my weight is good. Um, I'm happy. The camp went great. And that's the most important thing about a fighter, man. When he's going into a fight, is is he happy? You know, not being so serious. You know, always smiling. And um, I feel like with this camp, it was a lot different. You know, I I, I enjoyed myself. You know, I enjoyed. The weight cut, you know, dropping the weight, fine. Um, the training, the sparring, um, and that all leads into the fight, into fight night. You know, you feel like that during camp, 
fight week, you feel even more better. You're going to perform amazing, you know, and um, I'm just excited. Uh, Puerto Rican Day weekend, like the greats did, you know, Trinidad did it, and I'm bringing it back. Um, you know, you got the, the pandemic that hit. You know, it was two years that we didn't have a, a Puerto Rican Day weekend. And now for me, be headlining the first weekend back. It's going to be some crazy, man. You got all the all the celebrities that's going to um, be out there this weekend supporting me, you know, um, from New York. You know, Fat Joe, Tracy, you know, these guys, man, they're going to come out there. They're going to support the, the new talent. And um, I'm excited. You know, you just mentioned that you had so much fun. It was a different type of camp for you that you woke up happy and you you the weight just came off easily. What was different from this camp to your last camp then? Um, just, you know, my, my comfortability, you know, I'm just, you know, I did actually the camp in Puerto Rico and I've always wanted to do camp out there, you know, on my island. And um, it was it's just like a different type of energy, you know, like with me, you know, um, training on the island, being there. Uh, you know, the people, the energy was amazing. You know, I walk out the house, you know, you got guys driving by screaming my name, Belanga, you know, the future world champ of Puerto Rico, they're screaming in Spanish. So that was like the type of energy I had throughout the whole camp, you know, spawn partners, you know, pushing me to that limit. Like, yo, listen, like, we want you to become Tim, like, we want you to perform this fight. We want you to look amazing. You know, it's Puerto Rican Day weekend. You got people in, in, in the in the coffee shops, you know, I go in and they're happy, you know, they're like, oh my God, you know, the champ, like, so it was just a different type of energy, and that's what really changed changed a lot, you know, in that camp was with being over there. I'm always intrigued by fighters who do camp in New York. It just seems like it would be so chaotic because it's so crowded and trying to drive, you know, drive or train or however you need to get to where you need to be. It, it takes a lot of energy. Was that a, a big factor too in deciding to take camp back to the island because it's a it's a completely more laid back atmosphere vibe and all of those things. No, yeah, for sure. You know, like over here in New York is, it'll take like an hour to get to the gym driving because of traffic. But um, not only that, like I was with Trinidad a week before I started camp and uh, we went for a run in the track like at five in the morning and um, I was still decisive. I don't know if I wanted to go back to Vegas or stay in Puerto Rico. And um, when I was running with him, he told me, he was like, like camp, like in Spanish, he was like, yo, you got to stay here. Like, do your camp here? You know, like, People are going to love you. You fight in Puerto Rican Day weekend, you know, the publicity is going to be crazy. So stay here, turn on your island, turn on your soil. Like, we're here to support you. And I just listened to him. I was like, all right, like, all right, child, I'm, I'm going to stay over here. Like, let's do camping. It was the best thing I did. What's the best advice he gave you uh, going into the ring besides staying in Puerto Rico to train? Um, In the ring, he always, like, you know, like, just, you know, he never, like, never like told me like tells me anything like how to fight or nothing but he just tells me a lot of mental stuff like you know to you know to stay strong make sure that you know that I'm, that I'm in shape you know listen to my dad listen to my team um you know and, and keep my circle small like you know a lot of life a life a life situation stuff he always speaks about you know and because he always tells me like I have the talent I have everything I got the power I got the boxing skills I have the the, the ring IQ you know I just got to put it to use yeah that's a that's pretty. I mean, uh, there's worse people to spend camp with than, uh, than <laughs> right? Trinidad. That's pretty awesome and yeah. amazing. When you are when you look at yourself as a as a young man, a young boy, young man, when you were getting to box, Trinidad probably was an influence on you. So now having this time with him as a professional, what has that been like for you? Um, amazing, you know, with him and then also with with Cotto, you know, Miguel Cotto, the mm -hmm. two of them. Um. Because remember, when I was young, I was like two, three years old when he was like already like he was fighting the big fights. And then when I got a little older, like around six, seven, he he, he retired. And then Cotto came in the picture. Cotto took over. So, you know, I watched a lot of Miguel Cotto fights, you know, but um, just being with Trinidad, it was like the first, first time I I, 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 I was with him. It was uh, last year, um, July. And, uh, I went to his, his hometown in Puerto Rico in Coupe. I was waiting for like about eight hours and I started like tearing when I seen him talk, when he was talking to me, because I felt so emotional. I was like, this is a guy that made me want to box. And I'm like, I'm here with him, side by side with him, you know, and he was going crazy laughing. He was sweating so much. He was just excited because I was with him. And um, that really showed me a lot that me being there with him, you know, like the people was like saying, like he had a big like portrait of him, like painted on in, in a restaurant. And it was like, you know, when you become champ, 
we're gonna paint your picture right next to him. Oh, and it's one of my cool. favorite restaurants in his hometown. And the owner told me that. So I was like, wow, like that means a lot. Now that you've gone through that and just, uh, you know, you got teary eyed and you got the chills. Now that you're fighting again for Puerto Rico on the eve of Puerto Rico, uh, of Puerto Rican day, does that give you a different outlook of um, you have to, not not have to win, but it's just a different way of how you're going into this fight with so much more pride than you already had? Oh, of course. You know, like this is the fight that I feel like I'm really going to prove myself. You know, um, I feel like everything happened for a reason. And um, it's Puerto Rico. It's just it's, it's just something built in me that's just different. You know, like I'm representing my flag. I know that I'm main event. I'm, they, they, they're, they're putting me as like the face of, 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 of Puerto Rican boxing. So there's no busting new turns for me. There's no looking back. Like it's all or nothing for me this weekend. You know, like I'm going to put everything on the line, everything I've done work for my whole entire life. You know, my entire career as a young kid, me going to the fights and seeing photo fighting on the same exact weekend I'm um, walking the parade when I was young with all my little belts to me headline. And, you know, this means a lot. And like I said, it's like for me, this weekend is kill, be killed. Like for real, for real. Like I'm just ready to go for You're number seven in the WBO. And so obviously you are ranked. And what if you are victorious? And I know some fighters don't like to say call out names after, but obviously you want to get in contention mode. Uh, would the next fight be for a world title if that were to be the case? Um, yeah, right now, like we're not, we are, we're going to look to fight one more time in December and I'm looking to take it back to Puerto Rico. Actually, Ooh, in That would be great. I, yeah. God willing, you know, everything, you know, we speak to, you know, we speak the top rank and, uh, you know, top rank confirms it and we find a venue out there, an arena out there that, uh, that I could put the fight on. Um, I'm looking to finish the year off over there in Puerto Rico and then 2023, definitely looking to, to, to get strapped, you know, look for a title. Oh, that's exciting. I know, because we see them title holders in this division. It's it's become a glamour division. Yes, it has. And I've seen you. You've called out David Benavides before. Yeah, that's one of that's a, that's another big fight. That's that's, you know, that's future, you know, Puerto Rican, Mexican. You know, they, they call him the Mexican uh, monster. They call me the Puerto Rican monster. So that's a good fight for me and him because, um, you know, like I said, he's Mexican. I'm Puerto Rican. You know, he's young. He's my age. 25, 26 years old. So in the future, that'll be a mega fight. Absolutely. You think he'd take on Plant since he was a former world champion, but he's still formidable. He's still, hey, he can, what was that? What did he say? Para, les, that. Uh, para los chingados. Para, listos para chingazos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stuck on hope. You know, I, I'm, I'm built like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm from New York, I got that grittiness. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm from the island, so you know we don't we don't duck no smoke. We just it just all gotta make sense for you know like now as I learned in this boxing world, it's a business, you know. And um, this is not a uh, this is not a tough man sport. This is a, a smart man sport, you know. Like Floyd really put out the he really did put out the blueprint for us, you know. And um, like I said, you know this is not a tough man sport. It's a smart man sport. So you just gotta you know. It's, chest not check it so we got to make the right moves and if you know everything makes sense money makes sense you know the contract makes sense then we just make we can make it happen you're 25 years old I, I don't know how long you choose to be in the sport depending obviously how it goes uh do you think super middleweight will be the final weight for you because you think um Gennady has fought at at middleweight forever <laughs> Um, yeah. but do you think you can go down in weight or are you too big or do you think you'll end up moving up eventually Nah, I don't think I'm going down, but I'm uh, definitely going up. You know, I, I see myself going to 175 eventually. You oh. know, when I'm like three more years, I see myself fine at um. I just want to make my mark first at 168. I don't like to talk about the future unless, you know, I just want to make my mark at 168. You know, put my name at 168, you know, top everybody's name. And then, um, you know, eventually everything goes well. And, you know, we move up and we see what's, what's there for me at 175. Yeah. Exciting, exciting stuff. Well, I am excited to see you back out there. It's a great weekend for boxing. We've had so many great fights this week. We've had a lot of great fights this weekend. So aside from your own, what's some fights that what, that you've enjoyed recently or fights you're looking forward to seeing that you're not in? Um. Well, my 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 my, my boy, my brother, uh, Shakur Stevenson, you know, he uh, he looked amazing in his fight. Um, Jerron. Nice. 
one that I that you know I, I, we've been all of us you know me just fought, um Devin just fought you know he just became on the Spirit World Champ so these are guys that we was in the amateurs together at nationals you know traveling going to different national tournaments through different states and stuff and to seeing them really like doing it and then they doing it main event and then now it's my turn it's like all right but like I, I posted on Twitter like they really lit a fire in me you know because. I grew up with them, so it's like it's game time now. You know, like I, I really got to shine this weekend. All right, and I know you have to get going to the gym, but real fast, as you know, our show is called Best Women's Boxing Show, period. Uh, do you watch women's boxing, and are you a fan of women's boxing? Of course. You know, shout out to my to my sister from Brooklyn. We're from the same, the same hood, Bushwick, Amanda Serrano. Yeah. You know, she's right there in Puerto Rico, man, and uh, – you know, God bless her. You know, I seen her, you know, she's, she's older than me, but I seen her groom into the sport, you know, and, and go through our trials and tribulations and stuff in that sport, you know, and finding her way. It wasn't easy for her. And, um, you know, I, I got a little sentimental when I seen her. I, I couldn't attend the fight. You know, I was in camp in Puerto Rico, but me seeing her walk out and me seeing her like, wow, like she really did this, you know, in her city. She sold out, you know, the, the big house mm-hmm. and it was a too, you know, like I felt like, you know, even though they robbed her that fight, I felt like we all won, you know, especially Puerto Rico. Yeah. I mean, we got teary eyed when uh, she first walked out. I mean, uh, when Amanda walked out, it was you could feel the energy through the TV yeah. screen. And I mean, we were crying. I was like, Katie hasn't even walked out yet, but just watching Amanda smiling. Oh my God, I'm already getting choked up uh, about it. Was it. Beautiful. it was so beautiful to see because she's worked her ass off. And for her, for those two women to sell out MSG in the big house, like you said, was, was a moment, a moment in boxing history. Yeah. Okay, we have one final segment before we let you go, Giandra. Yes, we have one final segment here at the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. It's called Talk Your Shit. Since you are on Zoom, your camera is right in front of you. You have 30 seconds. Edgar Berlanga Jr., go ahead and talk your shit. Oh, so what? <laughs> you can talk about anything to anybody. Listen, all my fans, I just want to promote the fight. You know, um, I don't really talk shit. I just, I, I, uh, my, my shit talking is in the ring. Um, I just want to thank my fans, uh, all my supporters, and all the haters. Because without y'all, y'all know y'all still going to be tuned in. You know, um, so, so support, you know, get your tickets at Ticketmaster, man. You know, it's going to be a big weekend, Puerto Rican Day weekend. Like I said, shout out to all my supporters, all my fans in New York, Puerto Rico, around the world, and the haters. Cause I know y'all gonna be watching. I know y'all <laughs> kids. y'all gonna be there tight. So get your tickets, show support, and come watch your boy, you know, do his thing. Okay, one final question. Who makes the best mofongo in your family? Uh I I got my my, my chef right here. He's actually in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you better say your mama uh, or your dad. <laughs> Man, he's the one that's been shout out to Chef Johnny. He's been Doing amazing cooking for me. My weight's been low. And uh, shout out to him. He he cooks amazing. And also, he was a, my cameraman for 10 years. I didn't know he was a chef. Oh. Wow. Recently. And I didn't know he was going to school in Brooklyn, you know, for, for, for cooking. So I wound up saying, yo, like, we're going to put the camera down a little bit. And I'm going to bring you on the team so you can cook for us now. So. Oh, wow. wow. That's dope. That is cool to really, to let him live and, and, and his love for for food that goes into your belly and keep your weight low. That's crazy. That's I good. Yeah, we coming over for dinner. I know. You all can cook for us, Chef Tony. Oh, no, <laughs> everybody been coming over. I had already a couple family members come yesterday. They tried the skirt steak with the rice, you know, the the, mm. the, the, the rice and stuff. He, he cooks amazing. Oh, okay, real fast. Who's walking you out um, on your fight uh, June 11th? Uh, I... Um, Listen, I got, you know, like me, man, I got all the stars coming out that night, for sure, for sure. Oh, uh, man, um, you know, we're going to kill it. I'm working out with Don Omar. Mm. Don Omar, I don't know if you know him. He's a reggaeton artist. Yeah. yeah. He's, the, he's the king of kings. You know, when it's, we talk Daddy Yankee, we're talking Don Omar. And he's they the ones that started the, the reggaeton, you know, thing in the, in the music industry, in the Spanish world. And, uh, yeah, definitely working out with him. You know, my brother Fat Joe's going to be right beside me. Damn. I'm looking down. Yes. Yesterday's price is not today's I price. I know. Has J Lo, have you ever reached out to yeah. J Lo to come out to your fights? Uh not J Lo. Nah, I could get in contact with her, you know, through 
Fat Joe and stuff, I, I'm pretty sure she knows who I am. So, but eventually, you know, I, I want uh, Mark Anthony to walk me out. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> Ooh. Now that's hot. Imagine in Puerto Rico. Oh, my oh God. God. Uh, Edgar, we're going to talk to the Bob Father. Let's make this happen. We, yeah, I, that, that'd <laughs> we be coming a, out for that fight for sure in, in Puerto ooh, Rico. Could you imagine? It's J-Lo and Fat Joe Anthony, watching Mark the fight Anthony, and Mark Anthony And all the reggaeton uh, people. I don't know any of the names, but I, uh, what's it, Anita? Daddy is, she, Yankee. is she Puerto Rican? I don't know. Is Anita? Anita, yeah. I okay. think, think she's uh, oh, Brazilian. She's Brazilian. Okay, well, still, she fine. She fine. <laughs> <laughs> I even Shakira's not um, Puerto Rican, but damn, she shake her hips. We, we <laughs> your fight will be lit in Puerto Rico. <laughs> okay, Edgar, I know that you got to go. Um, thank you for taking the time out. Make sure Gosh. you guys catch his fight on ESPN and ESPN Deportes June 11th at the Hulu Theater. Get your tickets. If not, tune in because Edgar's looking to make a statement. This is the fight that he's going to show up and show out and say fuck you to all of you. Am I yeah, right? Exactly. Am I right? And Boricuas <laughs> everywhere stand up. I love ya. I love you too. Bye. Thank you. All right. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Oh, he's cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Ooh, that would be a hot ass Man, it's going to be exciting. At oh, the my bar, God. Man. When he said Mark Anthony, I was like, oh, my God. Let's just, like, name them all out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be dope. Oh, wow. Imagine all of that. I want to go. Work trip. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be fun. Work trip. Work Edgar trip. just has to win. That's all that matters. That's right. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, that was uh, that was interesting because, you know, when we – when. We didn't know how that interview was going to go because we always just see him on the screen and mm -hmm. he's very braggadocious. But the fact that when he started saying about uh, his time in Puerto Rico, uh, just he was very humbled. Mm -hmm. And just to know the the magnitude that the country has on his shoulders, he has them on their shoulders, literally, because you think Amanda Serrano had the same thing. Mm -hmm. So to follow up with that, and then also know, knowing Devin Haney, undisputed, Shakur Stevenson, he's on his way to undisputed. Those are the guys that he grew up with, and now it's like it's time, it's his time. So it's his time. Yeah, he just has to fight the right fight and uh, do good, and you know, make a statement doing it. And um, like you said, the haters are gonna hate, and why not? You yeah. know, what? if you don't have haters, then. Ain't doing it I know, right. I know you. I know you don't like some of all. You don't like us, but you still love us. Exactly. <laughs> and we've never seen a hater doing better than us. Exactly. But uh, yeah. So hopefully everything goes well. And um, I, I really, I forgot to ask him about Xander Zayas, but I don't know. I don't know who el who got elevated as a co maven event. I, I don't know if there's a female on this card. Um, let's take a look. Yeah. While we still have it open here, because yeah. we've got a little bit of time yeah. here. Um. But yeah, as I look this up, it, it just touching. That's why I really love what we're doing here on the show is we I love just getting to know them mm -hmm. and allowing all of you to get to know them. So stop talking crazy on Twitter to people. I know. Right. I mean, you get you, you know, you guys can because it makes Twitter fun. But mm -hmm. still, it, he was very um, he was humbled. I really liked it. It's just. He wasn't about like I'm. I'm here to knock people out. I, you know what? And he's learned that if you go, more, he has to go more than six rounds in order to become a world champion. Because no world champion that I know just knocks out in one round all the time. The, some of the best fights go after five, six rounds. That you got to go in and you got to bang it out and you got to put on a. Um, a show. Oh, so, it's not even on box rec. So we'll wait and see. So we'll, we'll wait, wait and see. see. But. Um, you know what? I I don't even know if I really want to continue the show right now because that was such a good note. I know. It was fun. Like, what do we talk about? But uh, so, like you said, we talked about Nonito and um, Inoue earlier. So once that fight happens, you're going to find out in the next episode if all of our predictions came to fruition. And uh, by the time you guys see this, maybe Edgar has already fought or he will fight. So make sure you guys tune in to ESPN or ESPN uh, Plus and ESPN Deportes to and uh, I can't wait to see who's going to walk him. I mean, he said it. I don't know the name, but mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be fire. The amount of diamonds that are going to be there that night. Oh, diamonds. my God. Fat Joe alone. Fat Joe, you know, have you <laughs> ever seen this video? Ironically, we should have Berlanga on the same day as Roy Jones Jr. Have you ever seen Roy Jones Jr. tell the story about how he almost got into a fight with Fat Joe? No. <laughs> oh, Damn, my I God. wish we asked that question. <laughs> it is such a hilarious story. And Fat Joe is such an expert storyteller. 
He is so funny. So he tells a story about how he's at the Garden for Roy's fight. And it was right after he released the song Lean Back. Yeah. And he says, you know, you could lean back like Roy or whatever the lyric is in the song. Well, Roy took it as a diss. Oh. And so they were came around and they came face to face. And Roy pretty much told him, like, I'm going to kick your ass for dissing me. And Fat Joe was like, yo, it's just hip hop. It's not a diss. And you really don't want to diss me anyway because I got, like, my shooters and my killers <laughs> with me. And I really don't want it to be that. But um, we're go- I'm going to find that video and we're going to link it in the description. It is hilarious oh to hear God. Fat Joe tell this story. He's such a good story. Well, if I think if you think about it, if you're going to hear in that song, Lean Back and Lean Back Like Roy, especially as a boxer, mm-hmm. it sounds like he's getting knocked out. Exactly. So credit to you, Roy. I totally get it. But, yeah, because I don't really understand hip hop. I'd be like, damn, that's some derogatory statement. You just Roy I was my ass. having it. I'm going to play. When we cut, I'm going to play it for you. You funny. don't sing it? Why don't you rap it for us? <laughs> I said, my, don't dance. We just pull up our pants and do the rock away. Hey, hey. lean back. <laughs> a lean back. <laughs> lean back. <laughs> A lean back. Oh, yeah, oh, that's oh my be God. This is good. Okay. Edgar Berlanga just told us exactly what he's going to do. The chosen one. Jeez. He's going to provide, prove why he's a chosen one in boxing. So make sure you guys tune in. Also, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe on our YouTube channel. We're so close to 1,000 subscribers. And when we get to 1,000 subscribers, we're going to do something so special. We're going to take our tops off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we ain't doing all that. We're going to have Travis do this. <laughs> No, um, we're going to do something special. And then also we're going to be able to go live on our channel. Yes. So post fight uh, uh, reactions, um, anything, just anything that we can do to do our do to our channel. Uh, we need your help getting there. So I get it. Every day we're getting that one subscriber. We are one more closer to that thousand. That's just one little milestone for us. But thank you so much to everyone that has supported us so far. We appreciate you. We appreciate all the likes and the comments, even all the bad comments. Uh, there's not really any bad comments. Yeah, people have been okay. yeah. halfway decent. Yeah, halfway and decent. then TikTok is a whole different story, but we got some TikToks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Giandra, again, a great episode in the can. Can't wait for the next week because we're working on some really, really good ones. I mean, we just had Roy Jones Jr. and Dennis Duglin and his mama, his trainer, and then also now Edgar Berlanga, but we're working on some fire content again for our guests next week. So Wait till they see who we got next week. Oh, yeah. We can't say. Yeah, it's going to be dope, though. Oh, my God. Melons. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I am Cynthia Conte. And I am Giandra LaBeouf. Thank you. See you guys at the fights. Bye, guys. (laughs) Bye.